Mm. Right, it's showtime. Well, you're on. Rock and roll. This is, this is showtime, people, for Angora Poets World Cafe on this Sunday, January 30th, 2022. Thank God we're out of last year. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I would like to start yeah, good this luck. evening. <laughs> I would like to start this evening by wishing you all a happy new year, because in France, the custom is to wish each other a happy new year throughout the entire month of January. And after what we went through in 2020 and 21, I'm for, I'm, I'm all in for it. So happy new year. If you see me in March, happy new year. Happy new year, February. Bonne année, bonne santé à tous. Okay, so we are Angora World Cafe, and uh, my name is Mo Stigger. I'm one of our poets. And tonight uh, we're going to do as we do and feature people from different cities and different countries and different languages. And then we are going to put this up on the Rorschach YouTube channel. So let me get started. Uh, I and we are very pleased again to bring on a Hebrew speaking poet. Last week was our first time with a Hebrew-speaking poet, and that's Manny and his friend Dom, who's also, I believe, from Jerusalem. Yes, yeah, see, two Jerusalem poets from from the heartbeat of the of the center of the world. There, Jerusalem, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And so we will have uh, these two people come on first. And so let us get started by me inviting back on. Manny from Jerusalem. Hello, Manny. You are on. Hi, Mo. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. We're listening. All right. So I'm going to read a uh, haiku I wrote this week. Um, so it's going to be short. It's called Stockholm Memory. Heated winter room, a duvet's golden fringes, your yellow toenails. Okay. And we always ask haiku. Repeat your haiku, please. Heated winter room, a duvet's golden fringes, your yellow toenails. Your yellow toenail. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Do you have something to follow that with? Would you like to follow it with something? No, I think I'll stop right there for now. Next okay. week, I'll share a couple more. Okay. So then now let's go to Manny's friend, uh, uh, Tom, and ask you to uh, recite something for us, please. Yeah, so I'm going to read you a poem in Hebrew, which called uh, The Window, and it's by Dalia Rabikovich, which is and a great, we... I'm great sorry. Israeli poet. Okay. And could you give us just a brief description of this poem? Oh. Um, it's about like looking through the window on the sidewalk in every day's life and wondering about, about the point of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, we're ready when you are. Okay. מה כבר עשיתי? אני שנים לא עשיתי כלום. אני רק הסתכלתי בחלון. טיפות גשם נספגו לתוך הדשא, שנים על שנים. זה היה דשא רך ומשובח. שחורים, שחורים התהלכו עליו, אחר כך פרחו מחרוזות דקות של פרחים זעירים, בוודאי באביב. אחר כך צבעונים, מרכיסים אנגליים, לא ארי. שום דבר מיוחד. אני שום דבר לא עשיתי. חורף וקיץ התהפכו בין גבעולי הדשא. ישנתי כל כמה שאפשר. היה זה חלון גדול די הצורך. כל מה שיש בו צורך. ראיתי בחלון. אוקיי, תודה רבה. זה נכון. לפני שאתה תגיד, אני יודע שהזמן הזה נכון. We don't know enough about the current generation of Hebrew-speaking poets. What is, and we're getting some information from Manny now. We need to get more information from a, a whole generation of budding poets. And so I'm asking you, 
what is your sense of the current generation of Hebrew speaking poets? Uh, that's a great question. I, I really don't know that much. I was talking a lot uh, about how last session I was talking about how um, there is a Renaissance sort of, of uh, Oriental Jewry, like people who came from North Africa, from Iraq, from Iran, and are yeah. like kind of reclaiming their identity. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe also feminist poetry is being very influenced by this intersection of identity. Or like, I mean, I, I said also last time that it's like 20th century Hebrew poetry with this sort of blossoming where we have Dalia, we have Yona, we have like, uh, yeah. that was like a huge blossoming. And for us now, it's uh, these, this generation of poets is a bit more, a little more in the dark because whatever mission they're going through, it feels like, they're, like there's too much to try and hold on to. So if you're trying to hold on to your identity as an as a woman or as a Jewish person from like North Africa or from like the Middle East, you're missing on your part as an Israeli and a Zionist maybe, and your part in the army. And then if you're writing about being a soldier or having to be a soldier, you miss out on being a woman or being like a Jewish person or being it just there's so much to try and hold on to in poetry today, so I don't know, it's hard to... That, that's totally understandable, even me from a foreign distance from your country, to, as I've visited, but it, that's totally understandable. And in fact, people sort of trying to hang on or even hold on, yeah, hang on, hold on to things, seems to be worldwide now, worldwide, you know, because of a crashing economies and mass immigration, um, COVID disruptions, there, as particularly among the youth, there's a lot of people going, what the hell is going on? And so it's quite understandable. Yeah. And so uh, that's just what it is. And uh, we appreciate you two coming on and giving us an earful of uh, your, your uh, haiku, Manny, and uh, your poem in Hebrew, Tom. So thank you very much. Thank Look you for forward to hearing you. you again and referring other Hebrew speaking poets of any age uh, to, to join time. Angora Poets because, as you, we're a world cafe. So, another language coming on is another welcome language. For sure. Okay. All Thank right. you, Mo. Enjoy Thank your evening. You. Sorry we're being short. Have fun. Don't worry about it. You're on the, you're on the clock tonight. I understand. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye for now. See you. Say goodbye then. Say thanks, Tom, for coming on. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That was nice. Well, now, their boyfriend and girlfriend, it's their last night. You know what I mean? They, they don't want to sit around listening to poetry when they have each other. I can understand that. Okay. So next on our list would be Angoma. So I didn't come here to tap dance is the name of his book. And uh, he'll be reading. He'll be reading soon with with our sister organization, Brownstone Poets, with Patricia. So, Angoma, you're on, baby. Give us three. Okay. okay. So, I did this poem before, probably, and this this music. Um, when I originally recorded, it had different music and. I just created this music, music today, so here we go.
music. Is my essence. It started with the rhythm of the downstroke, the yin and yang of love, creation of heartbeat in the womb. First smack on the bottom, the dissonant melody of my first note, the song of my cry. Gospel music harmony was my ear training baseline tattooed on my umbilical cord, wiggling my toes to the backbeat. Music lessons on my mother's knee. She was a Sunday school pianist. Seven was the magic number captured by the riddle of the fiddle. It was my first string thing. Music notation became a second language. In sixth grade, a flute joined the family followed by a keyboard and a cello. High school brought my baritone horn to the marching band. Civil rights sit-ins and anti-war love-ins birthed the age of folk music, but freedom songs brought me to a guitar. Minted by Odella, whom I later met, and Nina vicariously. Bob Dylan and John Lennon in rotation on my turntable. Doo-wop on the corner and basement quarter parties. Jazz came late at night, caressing my eardrums in defiance of my size, finally large enough to rock an upright bass, riding the A train to a night in Tunisia. Then came serious business, serious music for serious times, just two voices and a guitar from Central Park to Madison Square Garden, London, Germany, and Paris. Our songs embrace the earth. Kissed by new age music, I surrendered surrender to the Yudaki's healing sound. Didgeridoo is a misnomer, like Jigaboo. African rhythms took me on the journey. Kunga, Shekeray, Mini, Bata Drum, Mali to Memphis, Benin to Brooklyn, Deep South African banjo strum. My music teacher told me it's the music that keeps us young. Okay, that was good and going on. All right. Liked how you worked in two instruments and and your vocals. Okay, thank you. So uh, what, next, please. Okay, here we go. Give me just a split second and I'll be right with you. Now, here we go. So, uh, This is, uh, you might know it as a didgeridoo, but a didgeridoo is a misnomer. The actual instrument, the Aborigines say that it's, this is called the Yudaki. And Europeans that colonized Australia call it a didgeridoo because they call it out of its name. Uh, they say that the, the, that the instrument takes them into to what's called a dream time and that they dreamt the universe and everything that's in it through the sound of this instrument. I use it because it opens the way it opens chakras and it's good for meditation. And, and I play it really in tribute to ancestors. So I'm gonna play it with them. I'll do the, I'll, I'll do the poem too. <laughs>
across the page. <laughs> Sorry, I lost the page, y'all. All right, I lost that poem, but I'll do a different poem. Before the end of the world. If you think I'm sexy, let me know. Cause we could get along before these madmen blow up the world. I could be a bridge from the past to the future cause the present doesn't present much hope and I'm looking for an alternative to war. Maybe a dark beer or a Nazi dread woman who practices ganja inhalation meditation. <laughs> I want to taste the THC on her tongue. Take me to some other place deep between her thighs. I want to contemplate a navel from the inside. Search for answers to questions like what makes her juices flow. And I'm looking for an end to rhetoric. There's a battle going on to capture your mind. Surround yourself in light, forget your prayers. Instead of trying to talk to God, meditate. God will talk to you. Listen to the silence. It may be the only good news available as lost souls cry out the truth, sacrifices to injustice, victims of the world's disorder. Beware of bushes that burn. Wake up and piss, the world's on fire. I saw it on the news the other day, some madmen with stolen passports, men are no profit, you will love death more than women and freedom more than anything, set fire to twin towers in the Pentagon. Snake's eyes came up like skeletons, the stench of rotting corpses, poison Wall Street. Wrapped in old gory, the dial tumbled like a drunk down a dark stairway, a victim of amnesia, forgetting all the crimes she has committed. Pleading not guilty in a court of insanity, a cacophony of stolen elections, genocidal reflections, and wars that rage on since Solomon's temple. So choose the red or the blue pill, if you will. You scoffed when told to behold that the horse was pale. Liberty is stuck at the airport. Bags being searched by the National Guard. Cheeks spread, raped again like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Vietnam and Grenada. The news is controlled by Disney. The fantasy on your TV is stark reality. Only you have the power to change it. Put down your flag. It cannot protect you from the karma. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. So, uh, All right. teach. I gotta see if I can pull this one up from memory. This is for, for, for Amira. She said she wanted to write a poem with me. Well, here comes Three to the Charm. And this is called a poem for the sister who said she wanted to write a poem with me. I thought about writing a poem with you, but I was afraid that it'd be so hot and sexy that I would have to fuck you. It'd be so good that you might get addicted and think we should get married. And I've been there, done that twice, realize it's not for me, so then I'd have to kill you. Basically, I'm nonviolent, which basically means I'd have to love you to death when I'm twice your age, so I'm forgetting the idea and riding the A train on a Sunday afternoon looking for poetry. The gypsy woman across the aisle nods three times. Our, three eyes, our third eyes connect like some past and future shit at the same time. Destiny has me wondering what she, went, what she meant. Although beautiful, gibberish was all that uttered from her mouth. Only her smile was translatable. Now I find myself wondering if I should just forget or chalk it up to a twilight zone moment. I prod my muse with cannabis and Brooklyn lager trying to squeeze verses from my pen. My lover says I'm sexist and only write about women's pain and sex lives. I consult my feminine side. She's seeking psychiatric help, thinking she's a slut. Maybe that's why her pain works well on paper. Actually, women hold power between their legs that men would kill for. This secret be written in scriptures between the lines. We only read the, oh, we only read the, some kind of version, I forgot. What would he know? <laughs> <laughs> Pre-sex was illegal, the ankle of life replaced by the cross, blocking third eyes forever to those enslaved by time. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. In Goma. I'm sorry I forgot it, but that poem is about 20 years old. In Goma. In Goma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, you are not twice my age, brother. 
Second of all, we got to talk about that poll. <laughs> <laughs> well, the person that wrote the poem about was I was twice their age, believe me. <laughs> Somebody probably know too, but I'm not gonna tell you who it is. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, Jersey girl. Okay. Okay, well then you got some of that out of the hat. Thank you, Angola. <laughs> well, and I like what you said earlier, from Molly to Memphis. It's okay. the music that keeps you young. Yes indeed. <laughs> okay. It makes, it makes All right, thank you, Angola. <laughs> And and next uh, we're gonna go uh, from uh, Brooklyn to Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri, and bring on Letitia Hollenberg. And hello, Letitia. Hi. Actually, I live in Harlem. Okay, excuse me, Harlem. <laughs> okay. Now, Letitia, good to see you on. And uh, what have you for us this evening or this afternoon on your time? I'm gonna tell you a story. It was in the middle of the night. I was sleeping. It was in the middle of the night. My doorbell rang. I got up to answer it. He was standing there, his long black curly hair down his back, down his shoulders. He was young. He was tall and he was far too handsome. He was standing there next to his bicycle like it was a horse. He came to get me. I didn't know what to do. I stepped out and closed the door behind me. The street was all quiet. It was in the middle of the night. The street lamps glowed halos like in a dream. His dark diamond eyes shined at me. I walked towards him. He kissed me. When he told me to come with him, I didn't know what to do. I followed him. He glided his bicycle at his side, the seat raised high, his long black curly hair down his back. He was far too handsome. He took my hand and put it down the front of his pants. I didn't know what to do. I squeezed him. I held on tight, my fist bumping against his walking thighs. Could somebody see me? It was in the middle of the night. I glanced at him. I couldn't help it. He shook those long black curly carols, his chin up, my fist bumping, bumping against those thighs. We got to his house and he parked his bicycle horse. We climbed the stairs and I thought, is this real? Because when I open my door tomorrow, nobody's standing there, nobody to squeeze, nobody to hold on tight. He opened his door and turned to look at me with those twinkle, twinkle little star eyes. I didn't know what to do. So I followed him inside and I locked the door behind me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. I think we were, some of us were waiting with bated breath on uh, 
what was to be next in the narrative. Well, that's for you to hold and explore oh. and think about. Okay, all right. I'll leave that to Plant you. I gotta leave some room, right? That, that's your call, yes. Yes. Okay, Leticia, have you a second one for us? I have several more, but you know, I'm gonna give, let it sit like that. And if there's time for another occasion, then I'll pull those out. Well, uh, this is the occasion. It's the occasion right now? Sure, give us two more, Leticia. Okay. He can't see me. He doesn't want me. He forgot me. He doesn't come home. Stick out your tummy. Come home. Come home. It's time to milk the cow. <laughs> it's time to milk the cow. Da, 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 da. It's time to milk the cow. When was the last time? It's time to milk the cow. Don't let her get away. It's time to milk the cow. Aren't you thirsty? It's time to milk the cow. Milk it. Milk the cow now. Milk it. Milk the cow now. It's time to milk the cow. It's time to milk the cow. She wants it. She needs it. Milk the cow. Milk, milk. My poor heart milk. Milk me clean, my spilled milk. Out of my pores it flows, my overflowing milk. Milk of my soul, all white and spilt. Milk me clean, my milk white milk. Down my throat, your spilled milk. Onto me you pour, into me I drink. Your milk white milk. Let it be, so be it, be it that way. I wish I may, I wish I might. Yours and mine are white, 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 our milk, so white. Okay, all right, heat it up, heat it up, okay. And uh, you got to give us three's a charm, Letitia. You got to right. come on with three's a charm. This one's for you, Mo. Where is my song? Did you write one about me? What does it say? What is the melody? Is it sad? Is it about glee? Is it about desire? For me, you are my left hand, I am my right, my fingers join together, squeeze tight, then they separate out of sight. I love you, I love you, turn off the light. Okay. <laughs> Yo, well, that's a very nice poem, Matissa. <laughs> if I say so myself. <laughs> okay, wow, great. Good to have you back on. Okay, straight from the emotional heart. Thank you. Well, is there anywhere and, other place? Sorry? Is there any other place? What do you mean by that? Well, you said straight from the emotional heart. Well, some people get, some people reserve themselves to their intellectual prowess, just to their thinking. So they separate it out. Yeah. Or they give generalities without specifics. Well, I grew up With, in a town where you don't, 
and I came from Memphis, so I was trained not to cover up and dilute. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, and that's what I like. That's what I respond to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you seem to have gotten a lot of response from this uh, this screen tonight so far. So thank you very much, thank Letitia. You. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay. Now, um, wow, let's move from Kansas City to uh, Brooklyn Bensonhurst and bring on our, our woman uh, who does homage to the jazz divas and it's the host of Brownstone Poets, Angora's sister poetry group. So let's bring her on, Patricia Kerrigan. You're on, Patricia. Hey, this tree is gonna go soon. Okay, here's John Wessex, homage to my tree. I gave you permission to read it. Patricia Carragon's Christmas tree is still green in July. Maybe there's a cursed portrait of Dorian Bonsai with loose dentures and needles gone to gray. Maybe it's a vampire. Maybe most likely vampire trees prey on vegetables, not people. Though it must be a shock to open the crisper drawer and find the zucchini sucked dry through fang marks in its green skin. If Patricia's pantry is not enough, the tree transforms into a helicopter seed that spirals out the window to feed on Park Avenue's sugar maples. Of course, Helicopter seeds can't fly back upstairs. The trees walk a shame past a smirking doorman. It's worth it because every day in Patricia's penthouse it is Christmas. I live in a penthouse. Okay. Sorry. It's going down. It's going down. I'm sorry. I I can't take it anymore. <laughs> well, I'm very okay. dismantled part of the part of the area already. A lot of us got to remember that uh, before COVID, oh you're inside and you're outside of your house. Yeah. When we're decorated like like a Christmas Disneyland. It was great. It was oh. like so old school. Look at Jack. So look, at, school. look at Jack. Jack. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Made me feel better. Thank you, Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. My okay. day come down. I've been known to keep my Christmas tree up until like April. <laughs> yeah, I say, why not? I say, why not? It's decorative, it's festive. Why not? I have some of the decoration down already. You know, the windows are clear. Yeah, you're being modest this year, Patricia. It well, just looks like a big wholesome tree instead of the whole house lit. <laughs> well, because I took it down already. It was all lit, trust me. Yeah. Uh, Dike I'm, I'm losing ornaments one by one that mm -hmm. uh, the dog gets. Okay. 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 So number two, Patricia. Smooth operator. MTV played smooth, shade, jazz, and video addiction slipped with dust bunnies. I rode subways to nine to five lies, a key Largo fantasies for lunch, saw diamonds on company ads, never on my finger. Sales pitches advertised, the prize went elsewhere. I couldn't translate some women's trilingual fit finesse, nor did naivety see city lights dim at the office. The American dream, then and now, smooth operators in suits and heels. Competition had exclusions, and I've never read the fine print. Sophistication acquired, but never to cure for misery. I was a puppet, and dust bunnies need to go. Very autobiographical. Okay, you're not a dust bunny. Okay. Uh, before we hear your last poem, and Goma, please type in in the chat the true name of the didgeridoo, because uh, I want to use that name in our summary. The true name. If you'll do that, type it in the chat, please. You're you're muted. Oh, okay. Yadaki. 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so freeze a charm, Patricia. Give us the charm. Okay. These foolish things remind me of you, inspired by Ella Fitzgerald. Mm. At a bar off Waverly Place, I sat by myself, imbibed gin and tonic thoughts, stared at solitary candles and coupled daffodils inside glass jars. The piano by the corner, unoccupied. If Keys could recollect, would they play it again, Sam? Me as Garbo, you as Crosby, never Bergman or Bogart? Cigarette butts kissed by lipstick, reminiscence rose from ashtrays. The bartender knew better, paid attention to 20-somethings instead. My mind time traveled, an airline ticket to Capri, paradise lost on a sunny beach. Gardenia essence hugged our pillows, that trip to Ile de France, the midnight train to Paris. Foolish things burned strawberry incense. My heart flew too high and fell. Loneliness lit another pipe dream and, and cigarette. Your ghost reborn in smoke. Thank you. Mm, that's cool. Your ghost reborn in smoke. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Patricia. And uh, I remind you each week, we're waiting for your entire collection uh, as tributes and homage to the Jazz Divas, because you certainly have a lot of verse on them. So, okay, thank you, Patricia. And remember, everybody, it's Brownstone Poets, and it's coming up in February, so follow Patricia. I advise, some of us have already been on brownstone and i advise anybody here who has not get on brownstone that is a very very good reading very good session okay so let's move on let's let's see the the list now uh takes us to new jersey and we're gonna hear from amira shabazz hello amira hey hey okay hey. Well, I guess it's my turn let's see let's see <clears throat> for the freedom fighters everywhere, not just here, but there and there and there. In Haiti, in Cuba, on the West Bank, and right here, right here, on the corners of Broad and Marquette. I saw the people raise their voices when their fists were red and swollen and bleeding, bloods of lands work belonging to you and me. They raised their voices, sometimes it rained, sometimes it rained like melodies of pain in songs and music and poetry and poetry and dance. The rhythm was a beating heart with breath that smelt like dirt and sea for the missing persons they longed to see. The day ain't done, the day ain't done for the bloody skull stepped upon by sun. For the fist that was only quiet as a bullet whizzed right by it. For those that bled from knees scraped and bruised too often used. Hands with fingertips scorched from reaching up to suns, scratching concrete blades, knowing too often how to beg. And for those whose spirits never fades, in the strife of life, you've been a frontline essential worker all your life. From the moment placenta fed, fed earths, from things you made, from the moment you gave fruit, your fire be claimed by blowing melodies of flutes in heaven for you. You held the flag up and the fort down, waited in waters deep. Faith kept your heart to whatever we'd meet for the freedom fighters heart pains of murkiness, often void of bliss. So when he puts on his weapon, a sneaker, a book bag, an iPhone of games and TikToks of memories and leaves home feeding his soul with Skittles and prayers he may have forgotten sometimes. Sometimes he learned without his papers bearing any tribal mark or tat or kufi or thobe or waist covering white tee or map to ways back home. His story is the same. 
not a new game, a geographical alignment to brothers and mothers who are the same. Denied the right of freedom anywhere. In his blood is the fire that will not die. So he takes out his slingshot, his slingshot and his rock, and he lets it free. Down, Goliath, your evil cannot capture me. We be David the beloved, Ibn Solomon, who spoke to doves. My soul be energy, it transforms, it cannot be killed, it cannot die. For those he leaves behind not to stand silent, holding breaths and hopes of light and seeing his truths be. But he leaves to us the will, the energy, the life to breathe. For the freedom fighters everywhere, we stand with you. We are here. Energy does not die. It transforms and now it rests with you and I. Okay, okay, thank you. Wow. So refreshing to hear about, so refreshing to hear about freedom fighters. Yes, sir. Instead of the politicians we've elected who are apologizing for not getting anything done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, now, freeze a charm, Amira. Okay. So this is my second one. I was tricking by 12, taking care of self out of cash, what for, money, but, but ain't I a woman in juvenile, locked up, group homes, no school, A-W-O-L from life, medicated, medicated, but ain't I a woman, black holes, black holes, got my hair tied, used my underwear, who knows? Use my money for blow, for blow, for blow. Didn't know to wear them. Money for blow, I blow, I blow, I blow. Washed out dreams on, on blood streams. Your mama got a pimp, six kids in, not ever lonely. They, they fed on my meds. The government got me, got me, man, free. But ain't I a woman? But ain't I a woman, I ain't no hoe. I just want you to know. Even prostitutes get raped, walking and working, hitting pipes scared for life. Ain't I a woman, ain't I a woman? You see women be the ones who stand tall, reach bottom but know how to break they fall. You see women be holding babies, babies on hips, taking tricks, ain't, ain't what I want, it's what I learned. If I need be, don't judge me. You see women be standing by her man, blowing welfare and EBTs to live. Can't you see? I fit the mold. It's cast, it's dry. You can't mold me, but you can try. I have bent and broken, been broken, been broken, steady working, woo, 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 staying alive. But ain't I a woman? Some kind of woman, woman already. Let's talk about ladies now, because that's the next version of me. Okay, okay. And, and my last one. And much, much, much appreciation that you dignified sex workers, because <laughs> we're slow. We're learning in the public. I mean. My godmother was a prostitute and uh, took me out with her to see some Johns and would have me sit discreetly out of sight. She treated me better than my other relatives. So I would meet other sex workers when I was a taxi driver. And their main concern at the end of the night was making sure they had enough money to buy clothes and holidays for their children. And let's not okay. leave out eating. Yes. So thank you for for putting some dignity on that lifestyle. And three's a charm. Amira. Here's my last one. Here's my last one. I am the daughter of Carol, who was the daughter of Anna, who was the daughter of Giorgetto, who was the daughter of Melvina, who was the daughter of Araminta, who was the daughter of Fatima who was the daughter of 
the land she was stolen from. Diversity spills from my being inside and out. Muslim woman, we are all people. When he from above said be and it is, and I was later crafted from your rib, unapologetically crooked, and he said to straighten me means to break me. He knew you try. I am she. From the beginning when we were pushed out from the heavens, I received the blame for our wickedness, our nakedness, and our shame. You enjoy my pleasure. I grow strong from pain. Call me Hawa. Call me Eve. It's all the same. I am all women. Ethnic tribal beats pump my heart, mixing my blood with immigrant paths, country, regions, fertile crescents lay claim to me. They know who I be. Call me female. I birth nations. I birth nations. I birth nations. I birth nations. And to the brother who taught me to call myself Belalian, then taught me to reverence the womb, the womb that bore me. I be the testament of she who brings life to the inebriated soul, two steps from death. The inebriated soul, two steps from death, who called out to me as she wept, go back to your country. You shared your ignorance. You taught me hate lives here. But this is my country, my country tis of thee. And to the man in Walmart who yelled through slanted eyes, Hindu, get out my way. You see our beautiful wrappings as scars of gray. I am not oppressed. To the lady who asked me if it was true in my country, men could marry more than two. For sure it is four no more. This is my country. I stand corrected, I am a soul. I am a soul without country. I belong nowhere. Islam is my lifestyle, my lifestyle. And to the girl who left me the sand nigga note, I be black, I am beautiful, I be. And I understand you're wanting to be me. To the cousin who said, I wear mammy made clothes and my pajamas to the beach. Does my modesty offend you? Please take a seat. And to the nation who called out in the streets, terrorists go home or suffer defeat. Being black, being female and Muslim makes me, makes me a triple threat. I understand, but I have no regrets. And to the man with the cat whistle who winced when cuss words spewed from my lips, hitting back splats, slapping faces as you watch my hips switch. I am woman, phenomenally so, watch my glow. Don't let this hijab fool you. It gives the illusion of a mute, but my spirit, my, sti my spirit be totally brute. I make mountains split, be very careful, be very careful of my teeth's grip. I am woman. Do you shower with that on? Why don't you just take it off? Are you hot with all that on? Do you believe in Jesus? Can you just be my girlfriend? I ain't looking for a wife. To the man I'm married to, who asked me to be like Mary, mother of Esau, modest and pure, Fatima, emulations of her father's strength and secure. Khadija, a believer through odds be against her. I see her, the disobedient one, but in a righteous way. I am she, I am she, I am black, I am black, I am woman, I am Muslim, and I am unapologetically me. And I am enough. Whoa, okay. Spill it. Well, okay. What was that? Don't let this, don't let this hijab fool you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that came right on time. Don't let this hijab fool you. Oh, great. Showing that, wow. That was really good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank and you. I believe that was free, free is a charm. And yes, so, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, so next we are going to the other side of the continent, to uh, San Francisco with Dharma Dave, Dave Wilson. Hello, Dave. Wow, amazing, amazing, as, as usual. 
Thanks, everybody. Um, so the, for the first bit, I just wanted to um, say a few words to note that uh, on coming up on February 2nd in three days, we mark the 100th anniversary of the first publication of Ulysses by Sylvia Beach at Shakespeare and Company in Paris on uh, February 2nd, 1922, which uh, was James Joyce's 40th birthday. And that's a sort of a, a touchstone date in uh, what's considered uh, the beginnings of modernism or shaking up the old literature. And it seems, I don't know, I just think about that that was a hundred years ago. <laughs> and it seems significant that we pay attention to uh, to what those people did then. Uh, also later in the year, we'll have the 100th anniversary of the first publication of The Wasteland. So another, uh, so I'm gonna just for my first bit do uh, just this one quote out of Ulysses. With Sinbad the sailor and Tinbad the tailor and Jinbad the jailer and Winbad the whaler and Ninbad the nailer, and Finbad the failer, and Binbad the bailer, and Pinbad the paler, and Ninbad the mailer, and Hinbad the hailer, and Rinbad the railer, and Dinbad the kaler, and Vinbad the quailer, and Linbad the Yaler, and Zinbad the Fathaler. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what, those are, that's where the last thoughts that run through Bloom's head before he drifts off to sleep towards the end of the bus. Right. And, uh, and one, one thing that can be added is a, an Irishman told me, he said, have you, have you read Ulysses? And I said, I started to read it, but it was just so overwhelming. I didn't know all these references to Greek and, and Latin and historical events. I was intimidated. And he said, no, you're missing the point, man. Nobody understands everything in James Joyce. You're going to laugh and, and you're going to laugh through the whole thing and find the melody of his language. So when I read it the second time, like you Wow, for such an erudite man, he has a great sense of humor. And if one reads the novel, you find out you're going along often on a melodic ride. So here's the with that. Number two, Dave. Okay, there's a, uh, a piece from the future out of the past. It's called February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Witches Winter Festival, first day of spring since sitting here in humanity's room, awaiting the arrival of Mr. C.H. Goose Goostenberry. This is ordinary English, which alas is required. Lots of lost looking young people wandering in and taking seats. There is also one old lady and a fat red faced man. Everyone is so quiet, glancing hither and thither, but no one wants to get caught looking at someone else. Goose is going on and on, and all these people are looking totally lost. It's rather funny, but I keep getting flashes of paranoia, paranoia wondering if they can tell how fricked up I am. <laughs> the alarm went off this morning lurching me out of a dream world of many scenes that went on for a long time last night in vivid psyche color. The dog was howling at my door. I let him in and had to play for 10 minutes. Then I took a shower and got dressed. Mr. Thistle arrived. I grabbed my books and we proceeded on to the academy, smoking dirt all the way. I floated into humanity's room on the last waifs of the cloud. <laughs> Last night, I went to New York City on a chartered bus. I knew the other people on the bus, 
but now I can't remember them. We parked on a cold gray canyon-like street surrounded by looming tall buildings with black windows. Across the street was a single, single storied shack. I went inside and found one room with a low ceiling and carpeted floor. There was a table at one end of the room and benches and bookcases lined the walls. There was a locked door at the rear of the shack. I was aware of a certain feeling of inhospitality that had come upon me out of the street, perhaps nothing more than big city frights. The locked door at the back suddenly swung open and in burst a troop of boys in uniforms who began to scamper about the room, wreaking havoc. They were followed by a large round woman. She told me that the boys were pup scouts and that this building was their den. She was the den mother. She said, she told me I was welcome to stay so long as I didn't get in their way. While in New York, I had planned to visit the spot where John Lennon was shot. I learned that it was across the city from the shack, but the chartered bus took me and my forgotten friends away again to that place I had not been. Footnote, writing poetry, that's what I do. I rediscover my poet's head and dwell within it. Poetry in a land of extremes. Do what you want and don't get hung in someone else's idea of what you should be doing. Do poetry. Some safe harbor in which to drop anchor. That is what I seek, but I am buffeted on stormy seas. Okay, thank you. I love how that took off from a chartered bus ride to New York. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dave. I travel very far in my dreams, I must say. You do, baby, you do. That's why you, we call you the Dharma Dave. Three's a charm, Dave. Okay, this is one that, uh, it's kind of a simple poem, but uh, I, I bothered to put it in my book, and it was um, actually inspired by the quote the Joyce quote that I read to start. This one's called Sailors Sailing. The white light vision like sunlight twisting upon water falling and on moonbeams trailing and colored kites hailing and bailers bailing and mothers wailing and jailers jailing, long lines of protesting fools from unmentionable, numerous, quizzical schools, up and away in a great cloud of smoke. They are sailors sailing. Now, ain't that a joke? Okay, I take it that's a wrap. Okay, it's a wrap. <laughs> Ain't that a joke? Okay, nice man. You're just gonna have to film some of your dreams. You're just gonna have to <laughs> illustrate some of your dreams. You know that. <laughs> Our technology isn't quite that far along yet, but I'm, no, I'm okay. sure it's being worked on right now. Okay, well, thank you, Dharma Dave. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where are we now? Now we're gonna come to Paris. And we're going to hear from Carolina Caroline here in Paris. Hello, Carolina Caroline. Hello. Welcome. Uh, well, mm -hmm. uh, first I'll read something about music because um, I write just for listening to Ngoma. So <laughs> I, I took uh, this poem. It's a very short poem about jazz. And, uh, you know, uh, I was in a show and there was all this music, everyone playing, brah, 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 just before the music 
began. It's, it was like a magma. So this is the poem about. Uh, and it's in French. Moi je l'aime sauvage. This is the title. I like it savage. La musique sautille et virevolte. Je sens son flux batifolé devant moi glisser entre les gens et agiter leur corps. Je sens cette autre dimension bruissante, telle une jungle se faufiler, se métamorphoser le temps d'un morceau. Je l'aime sauvage. J'aime ses bruissements, cette cacophonie à l'allure chaotique qui couine, feule, rugit du plaisir de jouer. Alors, le morceau se civilise, prend une allure urbaine, propre à faire swinguer ce petit monde. Moi, j'aime sauvage, difforme, débordante de vie et d'images, de sons qui surgissent et frôlent et se glissent, la jungle musicale. J'aime ce magma des débuts, cet enchevêtrement de fils dont on ne sait autour duquel ils choisiront de laisser s'enrouler leur trille. Ok. J'aime la vie sauvage. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok, Caroline, Caroline, number two, please. Uh, well, number two, number two. Uh, maybe this one. It's uh, darker. It's about, uh, well, the title is La Passante. Uh, Les Passantes is the title of uh, Georges Brassens' uh, song, and uh, it was a sort of uh, homage, and uh, it's about uh, jealousy, madness, and love, true love. Ne quittez pas, c'est le meilleur d'entre eux. Ne quittez pas, il est tellement malheureux sans elle. Ne quittez pas, il leur dit qu'il l'aime. Ne quittez pas, regardez comme il pleure. Ne quittez pas, il parle de se foutre en l'air. Ne quittez pas, en commençant par ce qu'elle aime. Ne quittez pas, par elle. Ne quittez pas, ne quittez pas, ne quittez pas. Et eux, de répéter. De vaines paroles, disques rayés, comme si sa liberté, comme si son amour pour un autre valait déclaration de guerre. S'ils ont péché, elle doit expier. Ne quittez pas, les reproches sont si lourds. Ne quittez pas, elle les portait si bien à leur place. Ne quittez pas, personne ne l'aimera comme il l'a fait. Ne quittez pas, encore heureux. Ne quittez pas. Un ange s'est envolé. Place à la vérité crue. Elle s'en va avec un qui dit rien, un qui promet rien, un qui demande rien, un qui dit juste aime-moi avec envie. De ses baisers, elle se repaît de lui. Quand ses mains se balancent comme des algues à mille doigts, calées dans l'anse de ses hanches, elle l'aime, sans raison ni déraison, sans quotidien, sans lendemain. Le temps, ça va, ça vient. Elle l'aime parce que, et puis comme ça que ça déborde, que ça le noira pas puisque il ne veut pas, il ne le veut pas que pour lui. Tout cet amour, il en déborde déjà, tellement. Quand elle se réchauffe, quand elle réchauffe sa couenne à son sommeil, que sa peau glisse entre ses bras, que leurs mains s'accrochent l'une à l'autre, que leurs lèvres se perdent en chemin le long d'un bras, d'une épaule, ou dans le creux d'un cou, que l'un plonge en l'autre, que leurs regards se submergent, que se remplissent leurs pleines réserves de caresses, que la voûte étoilée se fait l'heure, que le matin arrive, elle ne fait que l'aimer en passant. Quelques touches d'amour, 
Ebu Uruku. Eh, sì. Je dis ça, je dis ça, au débat, donc je ne sais pas. Ok. Hell and high water. Ok. All right. So, uh, are we ready for uh, Free to Charm? Yes. Maybe the, th the third one would be a Spanish one. It's um, a poem I discovered of uh, Federico Garcia Lorca. Another one, but this yeah. one is just a very... It's like a poem for children. It's about, uh, you know, the small birds you, you make in paper. And, Origami. Uh, yeah. And this is that. <laughs> La cocotte en papier. I don't know the word in English, but this... Um, like a chicken in paper. <laughs> Mm. Pajarita de papel Oh pajarita de papel Águila de los niños Con las plumas de letras Sin palomo y sin nido Las manos aún mojadas de misterio Te crean en un frío Anochecer de otoño Cuando mueren los pájaros y el ruido Que la lluvia nos hace amar la lámpara El corazón y el libro Naces para vivir unos minutos en el frágil castillo de naipes que se eleva tembloroso con el tallo de un lirio y meditas allí ciega y sin alas que pudiste haber sido en el, el atleta grotesco que sonríe ahorcado por un hilo, el barco silencioso sin remeros ni velamen el lírico buque fantasma del miedoso insecto o el triste borrequito que escarnecen haciéndolo pegaso los soplos de los niños. Pero en medio de tu meditación van gotas de humorismo hecha con la corteza de la ciencia te ríes del destino y gritas Blanca Flor no muere nunca Ni se muere Luisito, la mañana es eterna, es eterna la fuente de rocío. Y aunque no crees en nada, dices esto, no se enteren los niños de que hay sombra detrás de las estrellas y sombra en tu castillo. En medio de la mesa, al derrumbarse tu, al tu azul mansión, has visto que el Milano te mira ansiosamente. Es un recién nacido, una pompa de espuma sobre el agua del sufrimiento vivo. Y tú vas a, tu, a sus labios luminosos, mientras ríen los niños y callan los papás, no se despierten los dolores vecinos. Así pájaro clun desapareces para nacer en otro sitio. Así pájaro esfinge, das tu, das tu alma de ave fénix al limbo. Muchas gracias, mi paloma. Sí. Ok. Thank you. Now you know why we say Caroline, Car Carolina Caroline. <laughs> Besides to us in French and Spanish and English. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now we are going to stay in Paris and we are going to invite another bilingual poet on and that would be Claire Andrielli. Hello, Claire. Hi, everyone. Such a pleasure to be here tonight. I loved what I heard. And uh, so my first poem. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be a bit uh, controversial. Uh, maybe the subject is very different from what I, I'm used to do, but it's like a little essay about how is it that I feel like I'm a woman? What makes me a woman? So it's called progress or is it? Because it's in the form of questions that all start with is it? Progress or is it? 
Is it the dress I wear? Is it the words I speak? Is it the blue in my eyes? Is it the innate feeling that I am a woman? Is it waking up every morning and liking my body? Is it thinking imaginatively? Is it talking with delicacy? Is it caring for others? Is it not being attracted to other women? Is it not having something between my legs? Is it being less bold and confident? Is it accepting all these stereotypes? Or is it an inner feeling of belonging to the feminine and yet being who I want to be? Ambitious, talented, creative, imaginative, happy and uh, unapologetic. Is assertiveness a male quality? Why? Does long hair make and makeup somehow disqualifies me from being taken seriously? When were these rules established? Who wrote them? Is there a Bill of Rights for women? If not, this should be a declaration of independence from all these unconscious boundaries that started with cavemen and women. Nature itself shows different patterns. The lion is a king? And what if his female partner ceased to hunt to nourish their family and preserve his physical majesty? What if women stopped work, working in the dark and started getting credit for what they did? In contrast, what makes a man? Is it his short hair or the energetic shake of his hand? Is it his obligation to follow social standards to please the crowd before him and his righteous demeanor? As to me, I am lucky. I wake up in the morning and know who I am. It seems like my body is talking to me, directing my thoughts and gestures. My body communicates with my brain, brain sending in messages that I am a girl. I can't explain it. However, I know that some qualities shouldn't be binary. A woman has the right to feel clever and confident, a man, on the other hand, might be caring and at times feel vulnerable. There's still progress to be made. Okay. I could, could one suggest uh, what is it? Could it be all of the things you mentioned, you know, mm. both desirable and undesirable? Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay, number two, Claire. Number two is called the door. The sound of darkness resonates in the tumult of my mind. It dictates actions I have never even thought about and claims I am a God, fertilizing the earth with my words, giving birth to thoughts that had stayed in the night of my mind for too long. Being a poet is giving birth to what you have and more, what you can't grasp. You enter the dark room on the tip of the toes during the black night of forgetfulness. It's half open. The slide behind the door marks the line between light and darkness. The song you should adore. Give life to what you have and more. Everything that you discover from the passion of your pen to the movement of your hand, excavating feelings you ignored. The void makes you think when it dances in the air and emerges from your soul. Fill it like your bilious bird flying through the night of your thoughts, shining through the darkness once aboard. But believe in the brightness of the open door, the end of darkness that promises yet another door, one you should adore. The second Thank one. you. Another door. Okay. Well, give us another poem, please. Three's a charm, Miss Claire. Yes. This one is in the, in the form of numbers. It's just uh, sequences. I was uh, spending an, an afternoon in the park and I wrote it in like little sequences. So it's called Afternoon in the Park. One, disappearing in nature. I'm that right now, sitting on the grass. Two, the branches bending along the way. 
point the direction to the wind. Three, a shadow of light or stain on the green curved drape hill blanket like a cover. Four, a white dog in the valley across, barking. Five, red low trees like cherries, bending. Six, and the grass flying in the wind. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Claire. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Well, we shall uh, stay in Paris again and bring on the uh, co-publisher, co-editor of Poets Wear, Poets Wear Prada and a fine poet in his own right, as well as an editor. And that would be Jack Cooper. Or lately, Jackson Heights. Hey, Jackson, you're well, on. Why, well, thank you, Mo. Um, yeah, I, I should say that I recently was hailed as the uh, best copy editor that um, a, a certain author I edited had ever experienced with major publishers and hundreds of literary magazines. Well, congratulations. All Why, right. Thank you. thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a well-earned well, compliment or tribute. Yeah, no, no, really. I, I was very confident. Um, anyway, I have a piece. I'm, I'm in sort of a wintry state of mind. This is called Crossroad. I know a region in my heart white as snow, fallen, timid under the moon, counting on such wintry days. It lies a few paces ahead, slightly apart, like hands and feet. Inevitably will come, go, when I scrape the angel from myself, an image far below heaven made, traced but swept to mock my shape. Ooh, okay, okay, revelations, revelations from the poet. Wow. And scrape the angel. Would you scrape the angel from again that I, line, please. Uh, an image far below heaven made, traced but swept to mock my shape. Okay. Thank you. Making an angel yes. of the snow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number two, please, Jack. Okay. Number two is uh, called Heaven Above. Heaven above, angels below, a terrible beauty, deadly cold as earth's should be. We, the world, enfolded in crystalline chrysalis, mortal shroud. Okay, all right. So, um, as my as my third, I'd like okay. to I'd like to read a poem that I wrote in French. Oh, please uh, do! Yeah, asking um, everyone to pardon my accent. Uh, the title is actually in English. It's called "In Chatham," which is a town in Columbia County, New York, and uh, it's where I first lived as a very small child. Um, on a farm there. Mm -hmm. And some years later, I found myself one Sunday um, with friends and it was snowing and I was just so thrilled to be back in that, the proximity of this place that was kind of fabled in my imagination that I had this kind of Proustian uh, return of everything. In Chatham. Pays éternel, rideau de mon enfance, je vous reconnais avec reconnaissance. Je vois partout la neige, ses fleurs comme des rêves. 
les feuilles d'antan s'envolent toujours. Les pentes intérieures se désignent sur l'écran de ma mémoire en employant les rameaux. Je chante aux cieux présents qui font le temps maintenant et durant à jamais dans la neige en dimanche. Voilà, très bien. Merci, monsieur. Ah, okay. Monsieur le poète Jack, ce soir, il est ton de, comme le poète romantique. Hein? Oui. Ah, ouais, thank you. Thank you. Très romantique. OK, thank you. Right. Was that three the charm, now? That was three. Oh, that uh, was? Okay. And, I, and I hope they were charming. Um, uh, I think so, especially when you came off with that, that romantic piece in French. Are you beginning to write? Well, obviously, you've begun to write in French. Are you doing, uh, what are you looking at, a series or, you know, oh, in no, French no, language? No, 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 no. Um, I'm just, you know, uh, bumbling along as usual with oh. no, no particular place to go. <laughs> okay. Well, with the French language, <laughs> there's plenty of roots in that. Yeah, yeah. No particular place to go in the French language is a lot of place. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Now, uh, what thank I'm going to do is uh, recite. Uh, this week I got published in uh, two places. So uh, bear with me that you may have heard this poems before, but I want to sort of credit the publishing, you know. And uh, So the first uh, publication is called American Poets and Others. And um, it, it is an anthology and it um, put out by uh, Giulio Tedeschi, who's the curator for uh, Cameron Press, uh, out and, and Giulio follows American poetry as well as uh, world poetry. And he's from Milan. And uh, so I was very happy to have this poem of mine is the one he selected. And so it's called, uh, uh, some of you have heard it, but uh, please bear with me because uh, I was happy to get it published. Um, so it's called Two Hypotheses in Search of a Common Theory or Yo-Yo Meets Yin-Yang. And I drove the old red Ford to the party, one of your friends from the whole grain goodness crowd accused it of bad vibes. No, I knew I had a radiator problem. We started flirting and she asked, do you drink Perrier? No, I said, I already pay a water bill. She spoke of a poet I'd never heard of. Really, she said, he's so eclectic, so universal. So is James Brown, you wanna dance? No, thank you, she said. I don't dance. I believed her. Another white stand-up party in the kitchen. What's this, she asked. A gross tattoo on your arm. Now that's correct, I replied. Think of it as a designer label limb. The current craze in Soho. She continued, where do you work? In one of those Pittsburgh steel mills? No, I said, the mills are all shut down, and I shrugged. But your instincts are right. I'm into manual labor. Since I got laid off, I masturbate three times a week. It's a part-time job. She said, I can't get into labor problems and politics. My guru instructs, it's all a cheap illusion. So is his ashram in Palm Springs. Believe in reincarnation, she said. I would come back as a dove. How about you? Well, I'm coming back as the disease that gets even with your guru. She laughed and said, be real. And I asked, what's real? Granola heads drive Dodsons over Pittsburgh potholes, wearing hiking boots on city streets, work clothes to college, and sport peasant smocks to Symphony Hall. Well, she gasped, you smoke those nasty camels 
your breath smells like wine. Yeah, I admit it, but it's white wine. And look who's talking. I watched you chew off three cuticles and gnaw a knuckle to the bone. Honey, you ain't no vegetarian. Filling on a roll, I continued on the high ground, pursuing some burning questions that night. I asked, is good karma stronger than must? As a significant other, the man squeezed. She said, enough with that slick talk and thank. And I said, is decaffeinated coffee like methadone maintenance? She said, I've had it. I said, okay, eliminate bigotry. Shoot yourself. Well, she went straight for the door and I turned and said, I'm sorry. I was just joking. Can we give it another try? After some hesitation, she replied, I've been laid off a while myself. I guess you'll have to do. Get in my big Ford and let me see if your tongue is as good without words. Anyway, it beats TV. Top that one, sucker. Okay. All right, I see that got no response, but I like the poem anyway. And uh, okay, now here's the poem that got uh, came out in um, this recent edition of it's called the uh, well Lithlorian Poetry Journal, and this was the beat edition. So uh, Strider picked this poem, and it's called "Waiting for My Pulitzer." I have two cats who must remain in the attic. My son has severe allergies. Mice, knowing this picnic every night in my kitchen. They make great conversation pieces when I have company for dinner. The dog has so many fleas, now I got them. Trying to sell this house, nobody's buying. My neighborhood's been renamed God City. The morning news is bills and 3,000 steel workers sent home for good. I'd like to go to my room and close the door, but the entire floor is covered with grass that cannot be disturbed. The phone rings. A voice says, do you need a home improvement loan? Why, yes, I say. What do you do for a living, Mr. Poet? Well, I'm a working class writer. Click. Okay. All right. All right, Mo, that so, was good. Uh, thank you. Both of them. Uh, both of well, them. Sorry, I, I was I couldn't react because I, I had to get my charger to uh otherwise it's gonna lose the connection. Well that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I had a third one here and I just kinda did what people do. I kinda lost it in the shuffle. So uh maybe if I don't follow it real quick. I'll bail out with two, and that'll be fine, actually. So that, in fact, that's, oh, here's a nice piece. Try this piece. <clears throat> this is prosaic, prosaic. Uh, by the same Lithorian Poetry Journal, I was nominated as Best of the Net, and I've never heard of Best of the Net. <laughs> I've never heard of it, so... <laughs> So that was amusing. Now, here we go. Follow me closely on this. It, it has some subtleties. Eric's boy. Not long ago, Eric's boy was born. His name is Daniel. In 20 years, Eric says, I'm going to tell him the things that are happening now. I'll talk to him about the friends who are dead and in prison and who for the comfort of self-censorship, the seeming comfort of indifference, the silence of willful ignorance and denial. I will tell him about how life was in all the countries spread about the world, especially our own. And I want him to look in my eyes and not believe me and tell me I'm lying. The only proof will be that he, my son Daniel, was here. 
but he won't remember anything about this. Back then, he was a newborn. I want him not to be able to believe that this was all possible happening. I can hear him say, Father, there, these acts are not in the books. These accounts are not documented in films and speeches. Your generation does not speak of this, but only of natural catastrophes, of God's inexplicable will. As some say, I want him to say that this time never existed. And that's that. Okay. okay, so those are my three, and thank you. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a few minutes to chat with one another and come back on with round two, okay? So say hello to one another, comment on one another, and anything you'd like to bring up for a few minutes, and prepare yourselves to come back with round two. Okay, Ready? two from you, yes. Oh, two from me. Yes. Two from you, second round. This is not jazz, but it's uh, in the uh, Milk and, and uh, Cake uh, Anthology for Marilyn Monroe. Okay. Okay. Bookworm, go Bookworm Goddess. You sang happy birthday to Kennedy and everyone loved you, or did they? Platinum blonde enchantress, bookworm goddess who wanted to blow out the universe. We were never told your true story when they programmed us to be sexy, play dull designated characters. Never the in-between or outside roles. Never to be thinkers, questioners, cerebral rebels with pencil, pen, or keyboard. You found yourself on bookshelves, scribbled poems with Joyce, Proust, Hemingway. Your Norma Jean face writhed in conflict. And who were we to critique when beauty had roots in imperfection and judgmental eyes saw what they wanted to see, never in agreement. But we never noticed that back then only a platinum blonde enchantress whose alleged suicide ended dilemma. The pill bottle silence left us guessing. T too many still thrive on gossip. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, I would add with recent, recent word on Marilyn Monroe, uh, I'm, fair, I'm convinced that they killed her because of circumstantial stuff with the coroner and he couldn't remove the body and had to be government agents who showed up coincidentally. And the fact, because Norma was pissed off with the, uh, with the Kennedys and said, you know, they're not treating me as putting me in this, giving me the attention they did. And, you know, I could get back at them I know a lot of stuff. That was her fatal mistake, yes, saying that was. publicly, she and the knew, word uh, got out. Three of the Kennedys intimately. That's uh -huh. and, and father, they used father and father and father and two brothers. Oh, was she with uh, Bobby? Father Joe Kennedy Bobby Kennedy too? and uh, Bobby Kennedy wasn't he involved with her? Oh yeah. yes, yeah. And, but and I think I think also the father also had. Uh, wow, so. She did make that statement in, in a press conference or to a friend. The word did get out that I know so much out on them, I could get even for feeling insulted by them. And uh, she did know enough because, uh, and so, you know, um, I don't think she committed suicide. I think she, but one other, one positive thing was she read some heavy duty literature and poetry. I think you probably know that. She was yeah, really that famous picture of her reading Ulysses. Yeah. And she wrote and, poetry too. Yeah. And she wanted to be more than than what was it called then? The dumb the blonde. blonde. The, the blonde, dumb blonde. blonde. Yeah. Her hair was actually naturally brown, mm -hmm. Norma Jean right. Baker. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that was a tragic story. Yeah, too bad she okay. come now. Yeah, I had, um, I, I knew a guy who, um, who was, a, he was a philosopher at Princeton. And he discovered, he was a friend of, uh, of, um, I'm sorry, who was, who was her husband, the playwright? Arthur Miller. Arthur. Yeah. He was a friend of Arthur Miller's. And so he accompanied, he went to a, um, he told me the story about how he went to uh, the presentation of some sort of award to Arthur Miller, and he accompanied and sat with Marilyn Monroe during the, during the presentation and described how completely nondescript she was. You know, she, she, they sat together and at one point, you know, she went off to the ladies room and he held her pocketbook and so forth. And how then when they left and they were walking along the street, he said, you, you know, just he dared to say, he ventured to say, you know, I'm really surprised at how natural you are. And so, and, and her response to that was, Oh, um, you want me to be her? At which point she apparently just completely transformed and became this luminous character. Yeah. Wow. Did you know that her mother it's all that. came from Mexico? The what? Her mother came from Mexico? No, I didn't know that. Uh, she she had to keep her Mexican background quiet, just like Rita Hayworth. Yeah. Hmm. Even though they're Never. white, white, they settled. There were a lot of white people who settled in Mexico. They spoke Spanish. That was a that was uh -huh. English language. You're okay. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, and and okay. and of course, Norma Jean is still a favorite poster. She's still idolized by many in the gay community. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember visiting many uh, uh, gay friends' houses, and there was Norma, no, Marilyn Monroe was on the wall, followed maybe second place by Judy Garland. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the Gay Pride Parade, there's always at least uh, 50. Cher, <laughs> Cher, and Gaga. Yeah. yeah. Wanting to be. Back in those days, they were called the Blonde Bombshell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number two, Patricia. Okay, this is back to jazz. This has a double meaning to it. It's easy to remember. Inspired by Billie Holiday. Mm. These buildings, old and majestic, with weathered bricks and stoops, recalled to two people, their shared expressions, Smiles and Valentine promises, how their bodies once swung in defiance and laughter, made the air fresher before family intervention destroyed who they were. I visualize these people, hear whispers in the wind. Are the buildings sending virtual photographs, a black and white world before my birth? Or are the lovers sharing regrets that were too easy to remember and too hard to forget? Whoa. Okay, thank you. There's a double you. meaning there. I don't know if you can get it. Black and white world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, I think you get. Yeah, I think you. I think that double meaning comes out mm -hmm. with a, without being pedantic, you know, mm -hmm. without spelling it out like a speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, Patricia. And, thank and you. Thank you for lighting your Christmas tree and showing yeah, us. Yeah. Now back. I'm gonna low and just you're gonna see me more. I hope you don't. Uh, say what? Okay. Walking around, putting stuff away. That's why I had. Well, it you're all always busy, so go ahead. We're you. Okay. We, we know it. We just keep us in earshot. That'll be fine. Okay. So thank Patricia. Okay, so the list now, um, Claire said she had to get up early in the morning. So she says, thank you and good night. So uh, let's go with, wow, let's go with Dharma Dave. Are you there, Dharma Dave? Wait, Dharma Dave, come back from the fifth dimension. 
Okay, well now I have to get my text in order here then. Just a moment. Let's see where is that? Oh yeah. So where the heck is it? I was Uh, okay, well, I'm not ready. <laughs> well, we can do piece. another poet and you can you can come after the next poet if you wish. If that would be okay with everybody, I would appreciate that. Then I can look for this. Well, can we go to Angoma? Angoma, can we come to you? Yeah. All right. So you're on, Angoma. Give us two, please. Palm Sunday's rituals. We go to Kings, pick up two pigeons and two hens, carry them to Queens. Curious subway onlookers quietly ponder why they are chickens, but no dog or cat in the pet carrier crate. The lady in red goes to receive Oya, but Sean Gold demands a rooster. We pass by churches, parishioners carry palms. Lately, I find myself examining such contradictions. The gifts of Ifa and Obatala came to me at Christmas. The world is in such chaos. I seek relief from cowboy culture from the land where my forefathers were stolen. Returning to old time religions, following ancestors' visions, wondering what use is your God with his hands and feet nailed to a cross. Each morning in my shrine room, I prostrate and pray to Orisha. Babalawos read the secrets, the mat is spread for his opuele. Ianipas read 256 odus with 16 calories. My art has 42 laws. Ten commandments seem trite and insignificant in comparison. So soon we forget there is but one God. No matter what you call it, the creator remains the same. There are many paths to the mountaintop. Time is unimportant to a tree. All things are connected. There is no life without water. The evening blesses us with rain. In a world of war and contradictions, we leave our bow at the crossroads and pray for peace. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now, Ngoma, you were doing, and you were making reference to African ancestral worship, spirit worship, yes? Ifa in particular. Okay. And was there because uh, one of the gods demanded a chicken, are we getting references to the mix with some voodoo practice with it? Exactly. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So number two, please. Thank you. 
didn't come on a Mayflower. Came on a good ship, Jesus. I'm a star to Tilda. Henrietta Marie. Shane Bound and Shackle. Glory Tilda, me in a castle. Copper and tobacco. Sugar and vanilla, you ain't paid your dues, you ain't paid your dues, you ain't paid your dues, to sing my blues, to sing my blues. Stopped on evil landing, try to walk on water. I'm a runaway, I'm a renegade, I'm a son of a dusty daughter. You ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues. Sing my blues, sing my blues. Dear Mark Beasley in Charleston, Nanny or the Maroons. Matt Turner and John Brown, Harry Tubb and Freedom Bound. You ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues. To sing my blues, to sing my blues. From sun up to sundown, black baby sold by the pound, ancestors buried in hallowed ground. You ain't paid your dues. The whole world seemed like a big plantation. I'm just trying to give my reparations, cause you ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues. You ain't paid your dues to sing my blues, to sing my blues. Okay. <laughs> All right. Some don't pay their dues. And Goma plays the blues. And Goma, <laughs> what do you cool. call that instrument? It, it seems something between guitar and banjo. What? Uh, how do you name your instrument? It's a three-string cigar box guitar. Okay, a three-string. Okay. Is there a... a, a, a blues instrument. Wow. Yeah. Is there a cigar box in it? Yeah, it's a cigar box. Wow. Okay. This is a cigar box. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a real. Wow. I take it that instrument was big, like in the days of early blues. Would that be right? Uh, it was big around 1835. That far back. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they're kind of resurfacing. <laughs> but they okay. were. No, they, they didn't have pickups on them back then. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's when they okay. were big. You, you relit it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was nice. Thank you. How many instruments do you play in Goma? I don't know. 
No, really, I keep forgetting. <laughs> About 12. <laughs> so that's it. You keep forgetting. That's a luxury it's problem. Playing all I of keep... them, man. <laughs> For someone to say, I keep forgetting my 12 instruments, that's a luxury problem, isn't it? <laughs> I wish I could do that. Well, I can't remember all 12 sometimes. Sometimes I, you know, I, start, I started playing, playing stuff when I was seven. Okay. okay. And yeah. I've been, you know, adding instruments and adding instruments. So some of the instruments that I can play, I don't play because I don't own them, but I can oh, play I them. <laughs> you know, okay. so I, I, I forget from time to time. I'm like, okay, you can play this too. Oh, oh yeah, right. I forgot I can play that too. Okay. <laughs> so oh, that's great. That's great. Linking, linking poetry and music together. That's a natural marriage. Okay. Thank you, Ngoma. Thank you. And, uh, Let's go from Harlem to San Francisco and go to Dharma Dave. Dharma, you're on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, so stay in the, the land of dream. Another uh, vignette out of dream. Gathered in the beat Berkeley Amphitheater with the familiar freaks and a band on stage, and Allen Ginsberg. No, the Grateful Dead aren't going to play today. Disappointment ruffles the crowd. Me at the back, sitting in a kind of shelf up on the wall, and down on the floor and to my left, my first girlfriend sits and looks up at me with kind eyes. And then at my feet, a wagging tail on a big dog. It's my lost Maxie, all noble and young. And I jump down and he sneaks a lick at my face. Okay. Is that a good, are you bonding, Dharma? Is that what you're doing? I, I was revisiting my lost dog who was gone yeah. and he came back in the dream and, and said, it's cool, Great. man. <laughs> you got some cinematic dreams, brother. Oh, I love All it. right, number two, okay. Dharma. Number so, two. Um, I was telling you guys, or we, I was talking about uh, February 2nd uh, and the 100th anniversary of Ulysses coming up next week. And of course, February 2nd is an important day on the calendar any year because it's... Uh, in the U.S., it's Groundhog Day. It's Candlemas. It's one of the uh, of the cross corner holidays. So it's between the uh, winter solstice and the spring equinox. And it's can anyone also explain? Can anyone explain the origin of Groundhog Day in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania? I'm not sure about that tradition, but it's just part of the whole same tradition of. You know, we've, uh, we're through the coldest part of the winter, hopefully, and, you know, hope spring <laughs> should, be, should be on its way. And also, I'll bet over time, day. the groundhog was just as accurate as the weatherman. I'll I'm bet over time. You, probably more. Huh? But that's also the, uh, the, um, the myth of the uh, precedes like and candle mass and all that. Uh, the uh, Demeter and Persephone myth about how uh, Persephone got carried off to the underworld and and it was on this date that she got a little candle to climb back out <laughs> and uh, you know and spring will be here six weeks or <laughs> whatever so anyways uh, for for that reason I'm gonna uh, I'm uh, going to be putting out a new uh, edition of Rorschach page on the second. And this is a poem that's in it. And uh, it's my dream trip to Dublin. John Jameson and son. John Jameson and son. Irish waters of the Liffey. As I stumbled drunk down the hill from the tower to cross the streets of Dublin, a place I've never been, and never pass a pub. There I saw my brother 
lover, all alone and with no other. I told an old joke of whiskey and mirth, and he quite nearly fell off of his bar stool, sawdust on the floor, of course. The river and the whiskey flowed to all the town and throughout the land. Like a star drew drop woman, shimmering with countless gems. We rolled with her in the meadow, new morning grass. My friend had a smoke and I turned to writing books. Fathers and sons drinking together and every single and blended grandfather distilled in Ireland like some of my favorite ancestors. The keen things seen in the woods, stones marking the road, of course. Playing checkers, happy laughter, red cheeks every evening. My friends, the old boys keep telling each other the same story from their childhoods and always standing by their own saintly mother. I'm telling you, it was enough to drive me to solitude, exile, and cunning, even though I always turn up again at the pub. Okay. Okay. Jesus, Mary and Joseph sleep Molly. Well. <laughs> All right. I'm still here. Yeah. Wait. Good, good dream, Dave. Good dream. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. And, I'll see uh, what I can dream up for next time, crew. <laughs> yeah. I keep returning to the same old neighborhoods and same old houses, and then I get lost in the neighborhood or the house I used to live in, whereas you fly around the planet. That's great. Well, good. Now, we would like now to come back to Paris and we would like to reintroduce Carolina Caroline. Hello. Hello. I don't know why my. Il y a un truc qui a fait gling dans mon ordinateur. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. Problem technique. I don't know. It's, um, maybe he wanted to play music after listening to Ngoma. I don't know. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, Never mind. Um, so um, let's read a poem. I don't know if I already read it. Yeah, it's about uh, the the ices of a of a man. Uh, I wrote it. I don't know when. J'ai pas noté la date dessus. <laughs> so uh, um, and it's in French. It's very romantic. Uh, ton regard. It's me trying to write a poem, a love poem, but every time there is something that stops me from writing, so this is. Je voulais écrire un poème sur la beauté de ton regard. Et puis, j'ai voulu égoutter les pattes. Mon chausson s'est pris dans le pied de la chaise. Je me suis retournée pour l'attraper avec les orteils et j'ai égoutté les pattes. Je voulais écrire un poème sur la beauté de ton regard. Et puis le CD s'est arrêté. Alors, j'ai entendu les oiseaux chanter. Les pâtes étaient chaudes, je les ai mangées. Je voulais écrire un poème sur la beauté de ton regard. And I lost my poem. Uh... <rire> je pourrais dire les faits qu'il me fait. C'est jamais pareil. Si j'y arrivais, ce serait tellement intime que je pourrais pas le lire ici. Je voulais écrire un poème sur la beauté de ton regard. De toute façon, je trouve pas les mots. Il les déborde tous. Ce serait sombre et profond, comme la nuit, et doux aussi. Tout l'univers en germe, et toi, et moi, dans un reflet. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I, I, I always like to ask, has this man 
heard or read your poem to him? Yeah, this one he heard it. <laughs> and 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 I hope he he must have felt very good hearing a poem like that. I'm not sure. You know, he is part of men that doesn't like you when people love him. He is not here. <laughs> Now, just by chance, he wouldn't be one of our well-known poets in the Paris community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder who that be. <laughs> yeah. Well, now. We all get a poem sooner or later, and that was a lovely poem for him. Yeah, I hope you will come to 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 read poem here. It could be great. <laughs> okay, all mm. right. Um, oh. so let's for an a second one, a short one. Uh, so it's very short. Maybe I can read it in the three languages I translated it. It's very very short. All right. Um. Uh, well, let's begin in English so you can understand uh, and imagine uh, after in Spanish and in French. Um, waiting for sunrise. Only a blue horse and a dawn. Federico García Lorca, Nocturno del Hueco, and Poema del Cantejundo. I closed my book. I shut up the radio. I shut down the light. I opened the curtains and let enter the night. In the kitchen, I ventilate the vap with strong fan strokes. Waiting for sunrise, I savour the blue hour the star upon the rooftop. So, the same in Spanish. Please. Solo un caballo azul y una madrugada. Cerré mi libro. Apagué la radio. Apagué la luz. Abrí las persianas y dejé entrar la noche. En la cocina ventilo el vapor a gran golpes de abanico. Esperando la madrugada disfruto de la hora azul la estrella por encima del techo. En attendant l'aube, seulement un cheval bleu et une aube. J'ai refermé mon livre, j'ai éteint la radio, j'ai éteint la lumière, j'ai ouvert les volets et j'ai laissé rentrer la nuit. Dans la cuisine, je ventile la vapeur à grands coups d'éventail. En attendant l'aube, je savoure leur bleu, l'étoile, par-dessus le toit. Thank you. Gracias. Merci. And, and I must say, as someone who writes in English, I thought the, the romantic nature of the poem, you know, as a, the principle of romantic uh, uh, sentiment, came across better in Spanish and French than in English. Mm. Not because of your writing, but because of the, the romantic uh, nuance involved in uh, Spanish and French. Mm. Yeah. And in French, I wrote it in French first. And so okay. um, I think uh, maybe in English, there are other words more precise because I translate it by myself yeah. so uh, as they call it, le mot précis mm, mm, precise mm. word 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Caroline. And thank you for thank you uh, too. treating us to hearing it in three languages. Good mm -hmm. for you. Good for us. Okay, and now we will move to uh, Jackson Heights with Jack Cooper, who will present us with two pieces, please. When he unmutes. You need to unmute. Uh, Jack, you need to unmute. Hmm. Since there seems to be a Joycean uh, undertone or undercurrent to this evening, I thought I would read something called uh, Trieste, Zurich, Paris, New York, 2012. Did he get to New York also? No, I did. I, I was... Because <laughs> uh, I, I know I wrote, he was... Okay. Yeah. No, he, did, he, he never went to New York. No. Okay. No, but I, I wrote this in New York in 2012. Cool. But, but I'm echoing the, um, you know, the con at the end of uh, Ulysses, it says Trieste, Zurich, Paris. And then I think it says it gives the, the date 2000, uh, 1922. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, riffing on that. Yes. Joycey. Okay. So it's called uh, Trieste, Zurich, Paris, New York, 2012. Some trouble on the line. Agreeing to call back. I did. She picked up. We. All she said. I repeated after. C'est ce que je désire, whispered. Et moi, oh moi aussi, declared. Lovely, even fabulous, really. Like Molly Bloom, I would get my breakfast in bed. Yes. Was it love me even fabulously? No, lovely, even fabulous, really. Like okay. Molly Bloom, I would get yeah. my breakfast in bed. <laughs> the way you said it sounded good too, Mo, though. <laughs> well, I tell you, that, that was nice. I like that. People yeah. coming out tonight with expressing what they, <laughs> what they want. Yeah, That's yeah that was lovely. And I did get my breakfast in bed. I oh, good. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, this next piece is one that I, wait, hold on, that I read at um, Brownstone yesterday. So, uh, Patricia, please forgive me, but I'll refresh your memory. Hmm. It's called, uh, again, I'm in a wintry mood, uh, it's called The Letting Go, and it has an epigraph from Emily Dickinson, then The Letting Go. Snow falls heavy. I live for its fall. Music, the soundless track of my dying love. A woman invisible, followed by myself. Her trail relenting, trailing off, disremembered beneath the sullen inches cumulative of loss, the sweep of porous fiber now abiding, constant definitive powder, the path indefinite leading away, although indelible. Indelible, okay. And well done with that great oratory voice, Jack. Very Thank nice. Thank you, Mo. Bringing it on home with emotion that supports the text. Beautiful, Jack. It's, Good to hear yeah, it again. I almost know. fell off the ladder, but it's okay. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Hang you, in Patricia. there, Thank you. Patricia. Okay. Well, those were two nice ones by Jack. And uh, now we come down to me as the uh, last member of... Uh, 
the, this group tonight. And uh, I, I will uh, change the topic and read you one that uh, I am going to submit to another, yet a, a, another end edition that wants um, beat poetry. Uh, beat poetry are many is many things, by the way. So um, um, I just wanted to say that because uh, the more, yeah, it, it's many things. I, I, I have a beat influenced voice. And uh, anyway, it, it's called Dead Dog. I walk the dog. He sits at the phone booth. I step over and call anyway. You are angry, always angry. I try to talk. Words mean little on Monday, I know, but a song is hard to come by. You tell me my time has run out. A bus screeches to a halt. A shrill yelp cuts the air, passes through me. Dog dies on the spot. The collar has snapped. Okay. Mo, you, you make me you make me want to say when you say that you know the beat beat is many things. To say that um, concerning the confusion of beat, Jack Kerouac himself, from whom the term derives has said that uh, that the, the root of beat was beatific. Yeah. And that's where it's at, if you ask me. Not other than the words from Jack. Yeah, exactly. I, I look at beat like I look at hip hop. It's a, it's a culture, it's a yeah. state of yeah. mind, you know, that has collective boundaries that keep people together as a community or a tribe. You know, and hip hop just what is hip hop? It's a state of mind that gets expressed there. What is beat? It's a state of mind that rejects conventionality. Oh, you know that I said okay, so that was my uh, first poem that I want to hopefully get published in this other beat anthology. Now I want to do something amusing. Uh, when I was playing with a quintet, um, uh, um. Uh, I wrote this down, and um, it's called I Telephone Baby. Let's get amused. I telephone baby. She said, who's on the line? I said, baby, I miss you. She said, I'm doing fine. Say, my heart is breaking. She said, you're breaking me up. If I could just hold you and feel your soft touch, it's over, Wild Rover. You're a lame duck. Oh, baby, I'm hurting. I'm down on my knees. Then call you a doctor. Fix your disease. Maybe I'm lonely. You be the boss. Here's a good order. You can get lost. Sweetheart, don't do it. Maybe believe I need you so. She snapped. My wheels are a-turning. Catch my drift, dig my riff, you gotta go. Those cigarettes on your table, hey, they're not my brand. Slyly, she said, they're lucky strikes, what I call my new man. I gave you flowers and chocolates and long hoochie coo. You kept me waiting and I'm done debating. I'm so done so thoroughly through. But darling, I'm desperate. I'm willing to change. Why, I'll even listen. Listen to you. Are you listening? She whispered. Pay attention real good. I promise you, darling, I'll do all that I should. She laughed <laughs> when she told me this. I got three things to tell you. A, B, C around. Sucker. Yeah, okay. That was pretty much a true story, you know. You know. Bye bye. I, you, you don't realize what you got till it's gone. You know? yeah. 
how many how many love songs are ba are based like my poem baby come back you know yeah you know my mistake baby come back what is it about no i don't know all men but what is it about me and other men that get out there and go baby <laughs> i miss you i'm down on my knees yeah <laughs> go catch the bus and get in the breeze no 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 i didn't mean it <laughs> Too late now, sucker. <laughs> Diamond and rust. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. Miss them after they're gone. Yeah. Okay, so that's been mm. a great evening. And and we got all these musical instruments and the expression. Just gearing up for Valentine's Day. <laughs> about women and, and go uh, uh, and going off into the dream world and, and hearing a dramatic reading that could be launched from the stage there, Jack, you know. And, wow. Hearing it in Hebrew, which is new for us in Angora Poets, um, and, and and watching, you know, like I said, decorated with a Christmas tree. You can't beat that at the end of January, can you? <laughs> no more tree. It's going. No. It's going yeah, okay. Long tree. Say goodbye. Adios. Au revoir. Okay, bye so, bye. Bye bye. So I will write a, a little re summary of tonight, put a song out again. And I want to thank you all so much for coming on board and making this truly another memorable life, not the memorable night of our poetry. So I want to thank who came on first, which was the two Jerusalemites. Uh, that would be Tom and Manny. And then we had Goma and Letitia and Patricia and Amira and Dave and Carolyn and Claire and Jack and yours truly. And so on behalf of all of us, everybody, thank everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Be well now. Happy Be well. New Year. And Patricia, thank you so much for this very romantic moment of uh, un unpacking in the the, the Christmas uh, decoration of the tree. It's it's nice for the ending of, be a, back in of a poetry time. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. all company together. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, the season's never over. You know, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's just, it just keeps I on giving about my, my tree haunting people <laughs> <laughs> okay it's it's almost the the changing of um of year for in china mm -hmm. next week mm -hmm. or in yeah. two yeah. weeks Monday. it will be the, uh, the, new year, the yeah, chinese new year so um, it's a great time <laughs> we're going it's into the year last year tiger. much better than last year now we were oh, really so. good poets last year we were really good poets through all the misery of last year. And uh, someone was saying to me the other day, and this they said to me, well, Dort, you're on Zoom. You're still on Zoom. I said, yes, because we've met each other across continents, and we decided to stay together. Uh, and they went, okay. So I guess that was a lot of being lost and lonely. I said, hell no, we were ramping it up. You know, lost and lonely was just a minor theme among us. We were coming out with various topics and so um because he was saying well most of the poets i heard on the zoom were talking about you know indecision and fear and worry you know due to, dutifully because of covid i said we were talking about it and then just blasting off with our poetry so that made mm -hmm. me feel good to be able to reflect that to this guy in paris mm -hmm. so uh anyway be well come back to angora poets next week and sign up with Brownstone Poets for February, you know, and uh, we'll all be doing good. We'll all be doing to come. Good. I'm waiting for Roxanne. Okay, we're waiting for Roxy. All right. Because I'm and, not a uh, Zoom person. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can tell that. You're, you're the decorator. You're the poet yeah, and decorator. Yeah, I'm the Christmas mode bunny. Yeah, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, right. Okay. Right, <laughs> I'll hire. Y'all take care. I'm going. Y'all take care. That's all. all right, have a good. Have okay. a good week. Okay. All right. Okay, goodbye. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.
the uh -huh. longer even my decorations have masks on them <laughs> <laughs> I, oh yeah